Welcome to the Avanti Women and Panasonic Speaker Series. For the month of October, we have Kate Hudson, and we're going to talk about branding. Welcome, Kate. Yes, thank you. I'm excited we're, to be here. Yeah, we're excited to hear your story, since yes. storytelling <laughs> is all about branding. So why don't we start with what is your story? Yeah, well, my story was, is actually kind of weaving. Um, looking back, which is always how the best stories start, uh, I didn't realize at the time, but there was a book that I read that really affected my life. Um, just growing up, I was really curious about so many different things, and I was really privileged to grow up in a family that just supported that. But when it came time to deciding what to do with my life, I was just completely at a loss. Mm. Uh, and this book, it's actually a book by Bro Bronson, and he uh, essentially just tells the journeys and stories of people who um, are successful in their life and how they, they got there. And I think at the time that I was reading it, I, I was looking for an answer because I didn't have my own. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, maybe if I could figure out or if I could hear how other people got to do what they do, then there would be like some clue or some jewel that, that I would find to be able to sort of figure it out for myself. Um, but it took me a little bit longer. Uh, I had different careers and I was lucky enough to travel and explore. And in doing so, I just met so many different people with uh, from some amazing uh, different cultural backgrounds and I was always again so curious and like how is your experience of life differ from mine right and I was always so just intrigued and excited by that um, understanding that and connecting with that other person um, but to be honest I didn't really figure out for myself what my what really my passion was and what made me excited and how to really explore that and develop that mm -hmm. until uh, a life event uh, where I became really sick um, and it really changed my perspective because everything that was holding me back that I didn't really realize at the time, like these fears that we all have mm -hmm. that are kind of really under the surface, uh, when you compare that to dying, suddenly things become smaller. Of course. Yeah. So at the time, I was like, I was really wanting to be in Toastmasters and just do public speaking, but I was so shy. And mm -hmm. so I just, the last thing I wanted to do or to be was embarrassed. But then when I'm like, okay, well, five minutes on stage to being dead. And then suddenly my world just kind of opened up. And then I just letting go of that fear, I just started to explore different areas like uh, of uh, Toastmasters and then improv and then stand up comedy. And then it all came together in what I do now for people. And I, I explore, I kind of um, betray places and I interview people and I figure out what are those pivotal, pivotal moments in their lives that have really led them to what they're doing now. And then how we can put that into a story that communicates their passion yeah. to their clients and their audience. Yeah, I love it. I love it. So you're going to give us a framework on how to be effective in our storytelling, it sounds yeah. like. Yeah, I yeah. love that. Yeah. So tell us, what were some of the lessons learned during your, you know, storytelling stages? You know, you were going through this journey. What were some of those impacting, pivotal moments that you can maybe share with us that other women can also be inspired from? Um, yeah, I think when I first started my business, that there, you know, you get, when you go into the world of entrepreneurship, there's so, so much information comes at you. And it's really hard to discern what will get you to that next point and and then what is just like you just become inundated right uh and you, you will get a lot of advice um mentors for sure are a big thing i am so lucky to just have had so many great women come into my life and support me in that uh and then i think the one thing looking back was um in and everything that i heard that i realized now was when somebody was like um you know when you can't do something you know actually pay somebody to do it for you because they'll do it faster. Right. Because so I think when we're entrepreneurs and we, and we kind of get in sort of like, oh, I can do it all. I right. can do everything. Right. It's like, you know, focus on what you're good at. Right. And then pay somebody else to do those I other love things. It. Yeah, so, I see the same thing. Focus on your strengths and yeah. delegate where you can. So thinking about your, your fantastic story and how inspiring it really is, what were some of the resources that you actually pull from when it comes to the branding and the storytelling and, and, and being a resource, you know? So what can you share with us? Yeah, the, the internet for one is such a huge resource. So in regards for me for storytelling, there's the fundamentals. So it's, you know, when you're listening to something, 
what makes that interesting. And there's a whole science behind that. So understanding like what our brain chemistry is that reacts to stories is really fundamental in structuring somebody else's experience into a narrative because you want it to engage your audience. And there are actual specifics that you need to include in order for that to happen. Um, and then on top of that, there's, I don't know if some of your audience may know Joseph Campbell. He uh, is a philosopher and anthropologist, and he was the one that really discovered uh, the hero's journey. So the hero's journey is a format or a storytelling structure that I use when I'm working with my clients. Um, and then I flip that actually when we're when I'm speaking with entrepreneurs because as entrepreneurs the way that we help our clients we're no longer the hero of the story our clients are right but within that narrative you are the mentor or in narrative speaking you are the archetype so when I'm looking at building this story story framework it's okay well what skill set do you bring to your clients that help them on their journey and that's the process that I, I take people from. So, insofar as resources, there's definitely that academic side of me, that you know, university student that really wants to understand the fundamentals and know what I'm talking about, and then the creative side um, that comes out of experience when I'm working with different people. And and again, I've been really lucky to work with um, you know clients that have been you know risk takers and and just you know taking a chance on me, and in working with them, that collaborative sense, which I so much enjoy, I've also then developed my process and learned what works and what doesn't work and what is of value to somebody, and then just built out from there. I love it. That's great. So I would really love to really make that distinction for a lot of our members, because I, I find they're either in that corporate space or they're in that entrepreneurial space. Right. So, you know, uh, could you walk us through storytelling in both those air arenas? You know, yeah. is there a difference? Or what do we need to know? Or... What yeah. does the experts say about storytelling here? <laughs> yeah, for sure there is definitely uh, a difference. Um, I usually say to people, your story is only good as your audience. Uh, and when I work with clients, I, I encourage them to um, when I create what I call a story database. Because uh, you're going to have personal experiences in your life that have shaped who you are, but aren't necessarily uh, something that you would use in a, either a public or a business environment. Mm -hmm. Um, but when you know what those experiences are and you have that sort of framework or that story structure around it, it becomes easier to then adapt those stories that you would tell in a corporate environment or a business environment without giving yourself away. Hmm. Um, so storytelling really only works when you have uh, an emotion and uh, but then also a conflict, but there's a vulnerability that comes along with that. So not everybody is, is open to saying, well, you know, there's this moment in my life when it was just terrible and everything was falling apart because then that's like, that's what gets engaged, right? That's where people are just like, oh my God, tell me more. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not always appropriate for the situation. So what I help to people to do and what I also counsel and our coach on is, okay, well, what is a story that meets, will be engaging, but is not going to either make you uncomfortable or your audience person, the person that is listening, uncomfortable either. Um, so that there is a nuance uh, in, in your approach, definitely. Yeah. yeah, I would think when you're pitching yourself for entrepreneur work, it's very different than at a career level. So yeah. I appreciate the distinction. Yeah, for sure. What about some branding uh, techniques or resources? You know, what do women really need to know about branding and where do they find these valuable resources that you can maybe recommend? Yeah, for sure. Um, for me, uh, one of the things, if I'd actually start with a friend, first of all, because um, branding is really about our values, and it's hard to necessarily know what our values are. So this is also another thing that I do. When you choose to do something in your life, you're really demonstrating what your values are. Um, but there's a really great exercise where you sort of write down, you're like, okay, well, this, these are the things that are important to me. And then I always get people to sort of time it. So you only have, if you're like 10 items, give yourself maybe two seconds to cross one off until you're down to three. And what you'll notice is that you'll have like three values, but then from there you'll maybe have other values that fit, but those are your top three. So um, that's for me something that is the initial start. Mm -hmm. And because then from there you really factor in, okay, which my, what is my mission statement? What's my vision? Where do I want to go? What is important to me? And then how do I tell that? So the way that I link in storytelling with that is that if you have a particular value, of um, say fun, you're a creative person. A story that I would tell would be my like getting into improv, you know, because I'm somebody who's collaborative and creative. Those are values that are really important to me. So that is a story from my own life that I would tell that demonstrate these values. Love it. So yeah, yeah. That's, that's really a great framework. That's a great framework. Very yeah. helpful. Yeah. So, but there's um there's some I wish I had some specific ones. I have a friend that's actually coming out with uh, branding on a shoestring. 
Um, and uh, we collaborated on that. So there's, uh, she definitely incorporates storytelling. So if you're looking at storytelling as far as branding goes, uh, that's a really good, great place to start. Excellent. Uh, TED Talks are also vulnerability. Oh, TED. Um, yeah, definitely. There's storytelling. Uh, another one is actually the future of storytelling. Uh, there's a there's two really great videos. One specifically is Paul Zak. He talks about the neurology behind storytelling and what our brain chemistries are doing and why it's important to have a story structure when you're when you're telling or trying to engage your audience. Um, I don't, uh, Making It Stick is another book that I read. Yeah, that's a good one. Storytelling for Startups is another book that I read. This is also really good. Okay. Oh, and The Story Wars. The Story Wars. Yes. Ooh, that's, I've not seen that one, so yes. we'll have to Google that one. Johan Sachs, I believe, S-A-K-S. Okay, okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll Google that. Yeah, and um, what's the other one? The podcast, because I'm a huge fan of podcasts. Um, under the Influence, I'm sure many people know it's CBC, which okay. is a marketing advertising. Yeah, love so. CBC, great. So if we had to look at Kate, you know, five years ago and looking back, if there was something that you would tell yourself or something you would redo, what, what would that be so we can share with others some of your lessons learned? You know, learning from our failures is something that's really important in entrepreneurship. So what are some of those things that have happened that you'd love to share with us? Yeah, I think for me, you know, having mentors and more experienced people in my life, I don't think that I've listened to them enough. Mm -hmm. uh, you think that you're listening. Mm -hmm. It's the other thing where it's like, when you're in the entrepreneurial world, it's like, fail fast and fail quickly. And I'm like, I'm totally failing. I'm totally taking chances. And I'm like, I'm so not taking chances. <laughs> um, and, and I think because you come into this with a lot of self-doubt sometimes, um, especially when your service that you're providing for people really comes from just your own journey and your own, uh, your own, either your own knowledge or your own knowledge base or experience. Um, and so for me at least, it's like trusting that, that there's value in that. And sometimes when you can't trust yourself, um, trust the other people that are talking to you, trust in what they're saying and what they see in you. Excellent. And then have that as a, a starting place because um, you'll get confidence as you move along. Yeah, some good lessons learned. Yeah. So how do you, I guess, define success and then we'd love to hear what your recipe for success is. So you have to let us all know you're the pro when it comes to branding and storytelling. So, you know, we, we'd love to hear definitely the recipe and how you define success, because that's important. Yeah, it's funny because, uh, you know, I was talking with a friend last night about being here and I'm like, oh, you know, I'm this on the show and I'm you know, the successful entrepreneur. And he, and he said to me, he goes, take, if you take off entre entrepreneur, and you're sort of thinking, okay, how am I successful as just being myself and what I do? Because if you put a label on something as an entrepreneur, you can go as high up as you know um, either Martha Stewart or you know Elon Tusk, and you're just like, well, they're entrepreneurs, but compared to them, I'm you know what is success? So success for me is being able to have an impact with the people that I'm working with. Um, and that is, I would have to say, that's what keeps me going. Excellent. So when I'm working with somebody and they have that aha moment, and I've facilitated that, and they have clarity in what they're doing, and they, they have that confidence now from because they have a place to start, for me, that's what I find so inspiring. Excellent. Yeah. And then going from there, if I can have that as something that I can make a living off of, then really, that's that's all that I can I can really hope for. Excellent. Yeah. And so now, when you combine all that together, what is that recipe for success for you to to be where you are today? Um, I think it kind of goes back to some other things like trusting your mentors, mm -hmm. um, letting go of fear, mm -hmm. which is always so hard to say to somebody, um, but it's it's really just knowing that your skill set and your life experience and what you have to offer is of value and it's important and there are people that can benefit from that and to never lose sight or, or doubt yourself in your ability to do that. Excellent. And that your journey and how you got to where you are um, has a reason and there's a destiny to that and that's what I love. I like finding what people's destinies are. Excellent. Yeah. So that's good. So you're inquisitive. I, I do. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm curious about people. You know, it, for me, even growing up, it was all about autobiographies. Excellent. My sister always read fiction, but I was like, no, yeah. I want to know about people's lives and how Excellent. they got to where they are. So does that mean your favorite book is an autobiography? Uh, yeah. Um, I, I, you know what? My favorite book is um, The Big Short. Okay. Which probably some people wouldn't think of, but um, Michael Lewis is the author of that, mm -hmm. and he's also written. Most people would probably know like The Blind Side. Mm -hmm. uh, as as far as um, business storytelling goes, he's 
bar none. Excellent. He is, uh, it's amazing. He takes complicated issues and he makes them engaging and understandable. And that's what I strive for. Wow. Yeah. So what, what keeps you motivated? How do you stay on top of everything? That's hard. <laughs> I don't know sometimes. Sometimes I wake up and I'm like, oh God, <laughs> yeah, I just want to, just want to stop. Um, staying motivated for me, I'm, I'm pretty lucky again. Like I have an amazing family that keeps me going and I have uh, friends. Um, and you know, it, it, when in doing improv, I think this is probably the biggest lesson. When you do improv, you, you walk into a scene and you have no idea what's going to happen. You have rules that are in place and how two people interact and communicate, but you, you don't know ultimately that it's going to work out. It may work out, it may not. But in those magical moments where everything comes together and the audience is entertained and you're having fun, it's, it's incredible to, to not only just witness, but to be a part of. Mm -hmm. And that lesson has really, um, just in this journey, just shown up in so many places if you're looking for it. Because you really, you know, you'll be thinking about something and someone will walk into your life and you'll meet that person and they'll just take you to that next level, that next step. Um, there have been times where I'm just like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm, I need to get better at marketing and advertising. And it was just, you know, an, a thought, really. But then I got so confused with like, okay, what, you know, all these different moving parts. And then when I had a moment, I started seeing all these people coming into my life that like had that sign, experience. right? Yeah, like you, you came into my life like that, you know? Wow. You were a guiding force for sure. And so you, you have to trust again. Yeah. So I think trust in, in yourself and trusting in the universe and just paying attention and being open to receive it because it will come into your world when you need it the most. You just have to be open for it. Yeah, it seems like a reoccurring theme for you to pay attention to the signs. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> and so leads me to something I really want to know and is does Kate have a superhero? Do I, do I have a superhero? Yes, okay, I was thinking about this because um, my superhero is Jessica Jones. Oh, really? Yes, I know. And that's, see, that is why I wasn't sure. That's cool. Like, okay. So, but why? What why? characteristics does she have that you're um, attracted to? I think for me, she balances grit and vulnerability. Okay. Um, so she has a toughness, but she also has this core that really wants to help other people and this empathy. Mm -hmm. And she's somebody that uh, you could see just walking down the street. Like she looks like everybody else. Um, and I think that's why I really gravitate towards her. How amazing. So, yeah. So we have an upcoming expo coming, the mm -hmm. Avanti Women and yes. George Brown uh, Networking in the Sixth. And you're going to be doing some workshops for yes. us on storytelling. Yes. Can you give us a little preview of what we should be expecting? Yeah. Um, I'm going to be teaching uh, specifically on what the story structure is because okay. I think that's important. That's like your foundation. Because right now, or at least in the last two years that I've gotten into this kind of area, I've been noticing that storytelling is such a buzzword, but the way people apply it isn't always accurate. So uh, I start off with the template of what stories are, and then I encourage people to actually talk to each other. Like, how do you get to where you are now? What is the why? And then how do we put that into a story that makes an engage for somebody else? Okay, good. So we won't yeah. give it all away. Oh, so right. we'll make sure they register for your event. But I, I do yes. love it. And it's grateful that you're going to be there to share with other women. Well, last year was so exciting. And the people that come to this are just so open and engaging. And there's such a warmth and energy. It's I'm, I'm really excited to be doing it again. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Thank mm -hmm. you. So at this point, thanks, Kate. Great job. Really informative. Really appreciate you sharing that branding and storytelling. Very impactful. If you want to hear and learn more from Kate, uh, please register at our website to become a member at www.avantiwomen.com. Join us at our networking in the 6th at George Brown College, November 12th. Kate is going to be doing some workshops on storytelling. And uh, please follow us at hashtag AWRecipeForSuccess.